Yes, we are. And, and thank you very much for having me on. Um, I think what we're seeing in the just in the past couple of weeks has been a real surge in momentum around climate action. Uh, we saw it uh, with uh, the, the speech that President Xi Jinping gave uh, announcing a new and ramped up target under the Paris Agreement that China will take on. You mentioned it a few minutes ago, a peak in carbon emissions by 2030 and achieving carbon neutrality uh, by 2060. Uh, that was a pledge he made a week ago in the United Nations General Assembly, and he repeated it today in the Biodiversity Summit. Meanwhile, you also have Europe, the European Union, making a major increase in its ambition as well, with European uh, Union President Ursula von der Leyen announcing a target of 55 percent below 1990 levels uh, for the EU to achieve by 2030. So you've got two of the world's three biggest greenhouse gas emitters, the biggest contributors to our uh, changing climate, making much more ambitious pledges. And if they follow through on that and go through with the implementation, that will be a huge deal for the planet. So you have China, Europe. Um but what about the United States, as we know, withdrew from the Paris Climate Agreement? Um, do you think these issues have been overshadowed by other things that are happening in the world? You mentioned this ramped up effort in recent weeks. Well, certainly the United States under President Trump has stepped back from climate leadership. It's going in the wrong direction. Uh, and that's something that needs to change if the world is going to solve the climate crisis. You do have in the United States leadership at the state level. You have California, which would be the world's fifth largest economy if it were its own country. You've got California taking major actions to reduce climate emissions. You have New York doing the same, many other states as well. So there is progress at the state level in the United States, but in Washington, D.C., uh, we're moving the wrong direction. Um, but I think if you look, you know, what we're looking for is that kind of global leadership that China and the EU have shown, and we really do need the U.S. to step up and join them. In our story a few minutes ago, we heard about what China is doing in Qinghai. Um, if you can give us maybe some other examples or efforts that stand out to you of what's being done in the country that can be replicated in other countries. Well, one of the really interesting things that China is doing as part of its overall climate plan is implementing an emissions trading system, a carbon market that China is rolling out this year for its power sector, which when it rolls out will be the largest in the world. Now, this is an approach that the European Union has, uh, has used with great success. California and 10 other states in the United States are using it, other countries around the world. Uh, China using a, this kind of carbon market to address its climate pollution uh, is a huge step because that carbon market will be the biggest in the world. And if China strengthens that carbon market over time, if it expands that market to other industries, and most importantly, if it makes that market achieve a cap on emissions that declines over time, that could turn out to be a really important part of China achieving its more ambitious targets that President Xi has just announced. So that use of market-based approaches uh, could be one way that China helps uh, lead the world uh, on climate action. All right. So